Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. I am Bacon Gaming and this is my replica of the 7K OK first generation Soyuz capsule which is currently placed atop a replica of its R7 series 11A511 launch vehicle which is ready to send the capsule into orbit. The replica is of course by no means perfect but I do think that it looks quite close to the real vehicle while also maintaining a good level of functionality. You might also have noticed that I've tried to make a pad that is recognizable as an R7 series launch site with a main service arm and then four hold down arms which are released when the vehicle launches. At launch the vehicle is powered by five RK7 Kodlak engines with an additional eight 2477 Twitch engines for control as the main engines do not gimbal. At liftoff, majority of the power is being supplied by the four side boosters on the vehicle. These side boosters burn for the first two minutes of the flight before being expended. This is done with the iconic Korolev cross separation. This method of booster separation is probably one of the best known aspects of the R7 series. And while my method does differ slightly from how it is actually done in real life, it more or less looks the same. After side booster separation, the next event is the separation of the launch escape tower and the fairings. This clears the way for the solar panels and the antennas of the 7K OK capsule to be extended once it's outside of the atmosphere. But before that can happen, the core stage will continue burning for just under a minute using its single RK7 Kodlak and four 2277 twitches to get the second stage and the capsule to just under 2000 meters per second at which point the second stage will take over and continue the ascent. And this highlights the main difference between the actual 11A511 launcher and my replica. The second stage on my vehicle uses a single chamber LV909 Terrier engine, whereas the actual 11A511 uses a four chamber engine, which I assume is more powerful. Of course, since stage separation has occurred, I have gone and unfolded the solar panels on the 7KOK. The storage method for these is a bit different when compared to the real life counterpart, although I do think it is worth it for the final look when they're unfolded. There's also a variety of sensors and communication antenna that need to be unfolded, and I have done my best to model all of the antennas from the real vehicle, and it did take quite a while to get all of them to be snugly folded inside the fairing, although I think the final product is certainly worth the time I put in. At this point in the ascent, the second stage just needs to do the final push to orbit, a maneuver that it easily has enough delta V to perform. So while we're finishing off the climb to orbit, let's do a brief background of the Soyuz 7K OK itself. As mentioned, this is the first generation of Soyuz capsule, and this is of course a series that is still in use today, ferrying astronauts and cosmonauts to and from the ISS. And while later versions of the Soyuz have seen a great service record, this is not exactly the case for the 7K OK. Over 10 manned missions, four cosmonauts sadly lost their lives. Vladimir Komarov on Soyuz 1 due to a parachute failure, and then Viktor Patsayev, Vladislav Volkov, and Georgi Dobrovolsky being lost prior to re-entry on Soyuz 11 after a life support failure. However, over its four years of active service, the 7K OK did accomplish a few spaceflight firsts, such as the first uncrewed and crewed dockings in orbit, and the first docking and manning of a space station. And of course, the 7K OK laid the groundwork for the later Soyuz variants that would become an incredibly reliable system. So now back to KSP, we can see that my replica 7K OK is now in orbit and just needs to do some minor maneuvers with its onboard thrusters to put it into a 200 by 200 kilometer orbit. Uh, once it's done that, the capsule does theoretically have enough fuel to rendezvous with the space station or adjust its orbit for whatever reason before it returns to the ground. And this is something I have done a few times with my simplified Soyuz replica that saves a bit of weight and therefore has a bit more Delta V to use. Although this version does have enough to rendezvous or adjust its orbit to a set amount as it only really needs half of its fuel reserves to return accurately to the space center. In this case though we're not going to rendezvous or anything we're just going to turn around and go straight back for a return to the Kerbal Space Center. So to do this we're going to do it the so-called easy way we're going to use MechJeb to perform a deorbit burn using the onboard thrusters in the propulsion module and using MechJeb will of course allow for a somewhat accurate landing 
at the Kerbal Space Center. Once various burns and adjustments have been made, the 7K OK will detach the utility module or orbit module, the propulsion module, and then the periscope that is used for docking, leaving the heat shield on the landing module exposed on the underside of that module. Uh, the tri-module configuration is of course a mainstay of the Soyuz and is still used on the versions that are in service today. In real life, those modules that have been discarded would then burn up during re-entry, although in Kerbal Space Program, the larger sections tend to survive and are destroyed when they crash into the ground. Of course, us in the landing module, we have the heat shield, so we'll be able to safely re-enter and then fall down to the ground, hopefully above the Kerbal Space Center. Once re-entry is complete, uh, we'll have a nice steady fall down to the Kerbal Space Center. A single parachute is deployed and that will fully open just before reaching the ground. After the main chute is fully open and we've slowed down enough, the heat shield can then be jettisoned and will fall away and explode when it hits the ground. And then with the use of some retro rockets, a smoothish landing will be executed, uh, hopefully not shaking up the Kerbals too much. And with that, my 7K OK replica has circled Kerbin and returned safely to the ground. The craft will of course be available for download in the description for you to try out for yourself, although do be sure to familiarize yourself with the action groups and the staging prior to flight. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, please consider dropping a like on the video. And if you wish to see more content like this in the future, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.